Hey guys, this is Mel, and I'm back to talk about Motherland Fort Salem. That is episode 302 this time, titled The Price of Work, which premiered Tuesday, June 28, 2022 on Freeform. I am recording uh, the day after, so on the 29th. Uh, huge spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the episode already, please go do so first, and then come back and see what I have to say about the episode. My other video reminders are up on screen. Take a moment to remind yourselves of those um it got pretty late last night so i wasn't able to truly record um and my throat was kind of a little sore so i didn't really want to risk it but i'm ready now to talk about the episode so let's i'm going to try to do this in 20 minutes um so fingers crossed hopefully i do but let's get started with what happened in this episode so timeline wise i believe it's a few days since the events of 301 based off of what tally said about the vision she had on her rooftop being uh, a few days ago that she saw into the into the future which I guess was one of the questions I did have in my previous episode uh, video so there's that uh, for the first scene of the episode we are in southern Iran with Hearst and his men locating the mycelium and starting to poison it, it looks like they were throwing acid on it because or whatever they were putting on it was causing it to rapidly uh, decay um, right before our eyes, even causing some of the, the, the mushroom spores to, like, shrivel up and kind of, like, shrink down as well, too. So that is what we are starting off with. Now, I picked one, three different storylines that were happening throughout the episode. Of course, all of them are interconnected with each other in some sense. But, first one being, where does President Wade stand? Second, trouble in the secession. Third, black reign of revenge. Or that's how I'm calling it. So, with the first storyline, this is mainly the focus of Fort Salem, mainly Petra and Acacia and kind of Sterling as well too. But essentially during this historical society event, uh, Petra and the rest of her, uh, her soldiers invite uh, President Wade, Vice President Silver, the blonde woman who we found out is Cara Car Brandt to this and others to this event uh for this hist historical society um while doing while using that as a cover petra and acostia try to find out where wade sides if she is on their side or if she's on the side of the camarilla while this is happening um and has uh has put m into uh or i guess has given Sterling the reins to use M as a security detail for President Wade, kind of as an extra pair of eyes on the president for the safety. Um, during this event, we also learn about this new legislature that uh, Vice President Silver and Kara are currently in the works of, which is meant to be restricting the voting for the witches. When they start talking about that, that's when Wade, uh, President Wade interrupts saying that she's on the side of protecting the rights of both witch and non-witch, and she will refuse this new bill that Silver is working on. So essentially, she's now on the Camarilla's like, hit list, essentially. I'm not quite sure what Kara Brandt's role is. Uh, she did come to the event as if she was President Silver's date, but in the previous episode, she showed to be a little bit more, she had a little bit more of a important role at the meeting and maybe it's just a cover that she's just playing the date not sure but definitely petra and anacostia were aware of her of the ruse she was trying to pull over on them so that is something there um so oh we also do see a bit of we learn a little bit more about uh no, maybe I'll talk about that later. I'll talk about that later. So let's go in the second storyline. So trouble in the secession. So we do see them finally reaching the secession with Rael's, um, with Rael's help. Um, only after shortly getting into the secession, Rael disappears within the mycelium because of what Hearst and the others are doing to it. Um, so Kalita stays behind in case Rael does return to their camp while everyone else is on the new mission given to Anacostia for them to do a surveillance check over at the chemical plant because there were reports about the Camarilla doing some targeting the mycelium. So the unit, the rest of the unit go there to check it out. Unit being Abigail, Tally, Adil, Scylla, and Nicta. When they do that to do surveillance, they spot Hearst and they pretty much don't do a surveillance mission. They kind of do like a hit mission almost. Um, 
and they try to kill him. He ends up surviving, and Tally uses her sight to hear that not only did he survive, but he's looking for the mycelium, the mother mycelium, and the first song. So that's something there. They take him hostage, bring him back to their camp in the woods in the Sicilium, only to lose him when uh, the marshals uh, get of the secession get a hold of their location. We do not know where Kalita is, though, in that moment. So she's missing, too. So that, I'm going to end it there. The third storyline, uh, Black Reign of Revenge, takes place specifically at Fort Salem. So this is Isadora and her students collecting the Black Reign as it falls and putting it in this chamber, allowing for the Black Reign to kind of solidify into Penelope's form. She seems to be all, like, confused as to what's happening to her, but when Isadora mentions, like, your home, in reference to, like, Fort Salem is her home, Penelope tries to kill Isadora, and then she's put back in the chamber, and then she kind of dissolves from that, uh, like she got returns back to the rain form, essentially. Um, and we do not know why that is. Hopefully we'll find out more later. But, last scenes of the episode show we're inside the world of the mycelium, and it looks like Rael wakes up into wakes up in a version of her old bedroom. And Willa, her mom, is there trying to take care of a sick uh, Rael, saying that, quote-unquote, mother is there to uh, take care of her. Either that could be in reference to, like, Willa as the mom, or as, like, mother mycelium, not quite sure. But Willa tries to get Rael to not focus on the burn S, burned out S in her hand that Scylla has been trying to leave her as a message to let her know, like, she's still looking for her. Rael is still a little bit confused um, by what's happening as well, too. So there's that. So character-wise, though, um, I was going to mention about Wade before, is that we do learn a little bit more about Kelly Wade based off of Petra's mom, Minerva, who Minerva and Kelly have had quite a bit of a feud or at least bad blood between them in their youth. But at this meeting, they've kind of like squared things away from the sound of it. It's behind closed doors and in private. But despite their bad blood between each other, Minerva knew that Kelly would not is all about uh, dignity or was it integrity? It's one of the two and she wouldn't be part of the Camarilla. So it wouldn't, it didn't surprise her that she proved to not be part of Camarilla. So that's something there. Now with Rael, uh, we do see at the very beginning of the episode when they're looking for a boat to kind of steal to help them get to the secession, Rael promises Scylla that they will go somewhere in the future together without them needing to be on the run. Uh, we also have Scylla mentioning the lighthouse again that um, first appeared in season one. But I'm not sure if Rael heard that mention of the lighthouse since she was already busy uh, looking over a possible boat that they were going to steal. So there's that. For Nikta, we find out that the face, the original face that we see her as is technically her real face. It's just the condition of the face is not real. So we see her still with a solid face. But apparently her real face is that same same features except it's like her flesh is peeling you can kind of see some of the muscle from underneath it a little bit of bone maybe um and if i remember correctly she said it was she got to that because of some impulsive work or impulsive workings i believe but with tally she kind of confirms that that version of nikta's face was what she had saw few days previously when she was on the rooftop trying to see forward into the future moving seeing days in the future instead of mere minutes in the future is n something nikta has never heard of and she's kind of surprised that tally is a is capable of doing that and i guess it's going to open up the doors of what else she is capable of doing now the marshals i don't know if it's just one person is named marshall or if it's the whole group of witches that kind of protect the secession are called marshals, but Rael explains it as them being the best hunter or tracker. And we've seen it that they're able to see through any uh, glamour workings that other witches have. Kind of like they're able to like see through things a little bit more. So that's a little something there. They kind of have like a, a bit of a creepy ethereal vibe to them too when they were hunting down the, the remaining coven as well. So that's something there. Um, let's move over to the most shocking moment of the episode. I will have to say, it's probably that the Marshals were even after the unit to begin with. I thought within the secession, all witches were safe. 
but I guess not. I'm kind of a little confused about what it is the marshals hunt down. Uh, they seem to run a tight ship when it comes to what and what enters and what leaves the secession. But I guess I was just shocked that they were they were targeting our our unit the way that they were. And it has me also wondering, what did they do to Kalita, or did they do anything to Kalita? Because she wasn't back at the camp when they were returning from checking out the chemical plant, you know? So that's something there. But let's move over, move on to my top three favorite moments. My first one has to be uh, Tally's support for Scylla when she, they are all dealing with Rail's disappearance. Um, seems like Scylla and Rail cannot catch a break. Um, as Rail is taken from Scylla, and just the the huge reminder from Tally letting Scylla know that they that they also have her back as they try to find a way to bring Rail back. Because obviously, if it was the other way around with Scylla um, disappearing and Rail's one having to deal with the fallout, of course Tally's gonna be there because like they're like sisters. But to see it being that she's also offering the same to um, kind of like her sister's significant other kind of a thing that that's pretty cool of her even the hug i thought was just a nice touch as well but it was great to see that at least that wasn't lost that it's not at least it wasn't lost that it's not just tally who's dealing with rail's disappearance but it's also Scylla as well too and vice versa Another favorite I did have was just seeing the combined workings of Abigail's powers with Adil's powers. He also got a little gruesome when they caused some bodies to dissolve, but it was very interesting to see how seamlessly both their both their workings combined together without them. It was like instinctual for them to combine them in the way that they did. And it was also great to see them realize that that was probably in some reference the worry about the union of earth and sky so i'm interested to learn a little bit more about that um so there's that we'll talk about that later too um another favorite i did have was just president wade's speech about where she sides not only with the the upcoming legislature bill but also just where she wants to protect the the rights of both witch and non-witch really nicely said really diplomatic i also just really like how that whole sequence of how like petra and anacostia having a plan and then see it kind of play out the way they hoped it would in gaining their information or getting their confirmation of where uh uh wade truly sided for things i really like seeing a good plan come into come into uh effect if you will so there's that Let's move to top three peeved moments. The one one peeve I did have was just the fact that Hurst, ex, Alvin Hurst, escaped from the truck in the middle of the woods. When didn't they say before they left to go check out? Before they before they left to go grab Kalita and before their encounter with the marshals, they left Hurst in the truck. Didn't they say that they were going to lock the truck or ward it so that he wouldn't be able to escape? And that's why they all left to go back to the camp, like. And yet he just opens the door and was able to escape. So that kind of peeved me off because A, what happened to all the spell working that was supposed to trap him? And then B, why would you all go back to camp if you have a prisoner? Either you bring the prisoner with you or you leave two people with the prisoner and you have the remaining two, maybe three, go back to camp to grab Kalita. Like, why did you leave your enemy alone and giving them a chance to escape like that makes no sense to me so i was a little pissed about that by that choice and then just to have them see him escape is like why would you not go after him yeah i get the marshals are after you but go after her so that the marshals are also after hearst as well too because like hearst is the one that's trying to destroy the mycelium he's the one trying to eradicate the witches why would you let him go free to report back to Vice President Silver and Kara about them running in, about him running into you. Like I don't I don't get that. So that's thing there. And another peeve I did have was just Abigail's suspicions about the unit being divided, about Tally signing with Nicta, about Rael possibly running off with Scylla. I didn't really like her Abigail's own suspicions because she says like yeah the unit is divided, but then she's also ranting off to Adil and Kalita, who's her own unit as well too. Like, if she's so worried about the unit being 
uh, being divided, don't go ranting about your own division, like your own people in your own camp. If you're worried about it, of your unit being divided, go talk to Tally and Rael about it. Don't go talk to Adele and Kalita about it. Because now it, it's like, if you don't want to cause a rift, go to the people you believe that there's going that you, a rift is occurring with. Plus also, a lot of the things that she's... I don't know, the fact that, like, I was kind of confused, like, Abigail, why are you so upset about Rael and Scylla dreaming about running away together and being free? Like, that is normal when you're on the run to wish of a time where you don't have to look over your shoulder. Why bring that up as if that's a bad thing? That's a good thing to hope for. At least you're thinking of a, a light at the end of this, uh, a runaway tunnel kind of a thing. And then for Tally and Nikta, the reason why Tally is going to Nikta is because she wants to actually learn how to fight and expand her skills and wanting to try to survive. And then the reason why she's drifting away from Abigail is because Abigail is telling her, no, don't do anything like the spree. But it's the way you use the skills that make it good or bad. It's not the skill itself, you know? I don't know. It's just Abigail seems a bit judgmental where it's and trying to and it seemed like she was pushing people away more than they were just drifting away from her it's like it's a reaction off of her pushing them away so it's just like she either she needs to relax a little bit more and have more trust in her girls that they're gonna always come back to her otherwise yeah the unit's gonna dissolve and fall apart so there's that uh moving on to random questions though i have a few but the first one is why did isadora have that look that she did when Penelope returned to the cha chamber. She had the, I don't know, it gave me weird, creepy vibes as if like, oh, this is something she had hoped for or like this is something that like was unexpected, but like it's something she can use to her advantage. I, I got like, I got a little worried about like, what could this mean and why, like, why would it be like a, a very bad kind of thing? I'm, it got me suspicious in the moment. So I'm wondering what that look meant. I don't know if it's because like, isn't Is Isadora like the uh, Scylla's old necro teacher, like the necromancy stuff. So like, is that related to what's happening with Penelope? I don't know. Um, next question. Was it ever explained why this succession exists or how it was created? I only remember it as like this huge cavern or this black strip that runs along the uh, United States during the opening sequence of the show. And it's just like you have like the west part of this the west part of this country. And then you got the secession and then you got the eastern part of the country. But like, did it ever explain on the show how that was created or why it was created? Um so that's question there. Another question. Does Kalita actually know about the union between Earth and Sky that Hearst is so worried about and she just denied knowing anything and claiming it's as like a probably an old wives tale or like a story to like keep people uh, guessing? Because I went because the camera focused on Kalita's face when she walked away from that conversation. So it has me thinking that she may know more than what she has led Abigail and Adil to believe. So um, I think she knows more. Kalita knows a lot for, so I feel like sh she probably knows something about that specifically. So there's that. Another question, does President Wade know that M is coming from Fort Salem? Or does the president just think that, that M is just another new uh, garden training? I feel like they Wade has to know, right? Because then that also leads into my next question of does President Vice President Silver know that Sterling is a witch? Or because like if he's if Silver is Camarilla, I feel like he'd be a little bit more tight lipped or a little bit more paranoid if about his dealings with Camarilla if he knew Sterling was a witch. Right? Or the comments that he makes. So I'm like, I have a feeling he doesn't know, but I kind of want to make sure if that's correct or not. So there's that. The last question is, why does my the mycelium Willa, or Willa in the mycelium world, why does she want to keep Rail there? Is it more of like mother 
like a pseudo mother daughter thing, or is it because Rael is kind of one of the physical hosts for the mycelium's power and it wants to keep it safe, so it figures keeping them in their world is the reason why to preserve the body, or is it something else going on here? Because we have to remember too that Alder, probably mycelium's version of Alder, is out in the world now, who, who wasn't shown at all in this episode. So it's like maybe only one of them could be out in the world at a time or maybe it is because of the current poisoning of the mycelium is why they kind of called rail back into the world i don't know that's a question there oh i see a 20 minute mark i'm almost done uh so predictions very quickly based off the promo for 303 i saw that the coven is on the run for the marshals we see anacostia uh casually or I don't know why I wrote Coast, but Anacostia warns President Wade that the Camarilla see her as a threat and Wade is not scared. We see Hearst being pissed. We see Anacostia anxiously waiting with Sterling for update for uh, battle updates. We see M rushing to get to Wade, but it seems they might be out of, uh, they might be too late. We see Albin Hearst on the operating table beside a restrained rail. Poor girl, never gets a break. It would also looks like Abigail, Tally, and Adele run into Alder, Alder at a bar with the statement, time is running out. I'm going to talk about it in a moment, though. But based off the synopsis, though, for the episode, it reads, With the secession marshal on their heels, the unit slips up. Scylla and Nicta attempt to draw the marshal away while Tally, Abigail, and Adele meet an old ally. President Wade's political stance puts her in danger. Okay, that synopsis in itself is pretty good. It's not too like too spoilerish. It just gives you enough to know who's being focused on. But this whole this is what I have an issue with the the line that says, uh, "While Tally, Abigail, and Adil meet an old ally." If you just read the synopsis, then you, there could be a whole bunch of people that you might think like, oh, maybe they come across. But the promo ruins it. Of course, it's going to be Alder is now the old ally. But, like, the promo ruins that. I mean, I, I guess it kind of depends on if, like, if you just go off the synopsis and you watch the promo, then, yeah, it's going to spoil the fact that, oh, it's Adler, Adler. That's the, I can never say the name right, but it's her that is the old ally. But if you just go off the promo and you want people to know, like, oh, there's going to be that kind of reunion, then I guess, okay, that's good for a trailer. But, I don't know, part of me kind of wants to, to have that be a surprise as I watch the episode. If I'm just going off the synopsis, I don't know. A part of me is like, maybe I shouldn't watch the promos. But then at the same time, it's like, I kind of want to get a sense of like what the upcoming episode is going to be, you know? But otherwise, guys, yeah, that's pretty much it. What did you guys think of this episode? What did you guys like about it? What do you think will happen next? Let me know in the comments down below. Love to hear your thoughts, theories, and opinions about all that good stuff. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos if you haven't done so already. If you want, check out my Tumblr page. Link for that is down below. My WordPress account link is down below as well. Uh, that's more organized, it's more detailed, but still a work in progress. Any of my Tumblr tags, are listed on my WordPress. I have to work on updating those as well. I don't recall if I've started a motherland uh, tag for Tumblr, but you can always follow me on either of the accounts in case it does. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm still trying to get used to recording on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and then editing on a Wednesday, Thursday for the video. Um, still trying to get used to that shift from it being Monday or shift from it previously being Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, but yeah, so by the time you guys watch this, looking forward to hearing what you thought about the episode. I'm also wondering what you think is in store for the rest of the season. Um, definitely things are hyping up. Very curious about a lot of things it, uh, in the world building in itself. But I'm just excited to see where things go. But yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, my throat, I can feel it. I need to, I need to rehydrate myself. Um, but yeah, so this is Mel. Wish you a great day, great week, wherever you are. Please stay safe. And I hope you come back next week to see what they say about the next episode. Until then, bye for now.